that all flights in and out of Armstrong International have been canceled for today. That's right, and that's a big update because up until now we were hearing one or two airlines Southwest Delta canceling. Mm -hmm. So now guys, if you're headed to the airport, turn back around all flights in and out of New Orleans canceled today. And now we want to toss it out to Jacqueline Quinn, who joins us from Man Shack. What are the conditions there? It's pretty windy. In fact, we were using our instrument here to track how much wind is coming through this area, how fast it was going. It's about 25 miles per hour sustained winds. Uh, this is Middendorf's restaurant. If you're familiar, this area has been hit uh, pretty hard in the past, in particular from Hurricane Isaac. You see the flood line there, but the owner here has a rebuilt, and so this is a little bit higher. He also has his own uh, flood protection system, which he's putting up right now. Now, as I understand it, this is actually uh, for when the storm actually makes landfall when it comes back because it pushes water from Lake Morapa and just from experience he wants to be ready so he's uh, being very cautious about that. Now while we were here of course uh, we ran into parish president of Tangipaho Robbie Miller and Robbie just tell me what's going on right now you said you started pretty early this morning. Well we did and first of all thank you guys for coming down to let our citizens be updated but we started out early this morning about four we going to check on things it was pretty calm then but as the last couple three hours it started picking up as you just talked about the wind uh, the tide has been pushed in a lot by the wind uh, several feet our boat launch is completely underwater down in Manshack just a little bit down the way uh, I guess our concern right now is that we're not at high tide it's low tide right now so the tide's gonna come up then the rain's gonna fall you know, still 10 15 20 inches of rain in our rivers the, the, the level our, our river crests are what our real concerns are because that's where uh, the Tangible River drains through the middle of the parish uh, and from Kentwood all the way down to, to the mouth of the, of the river uh, is a cause, a cause for concern. Now, I don't know how closely you've been following the track, but tell me about what is the worst case scenario. You know, we're still talking about this making landfall, still waiting for that. Well, right now, I think the worst case would be if it just comes due north because then we're pretty much dead on. Uh, but because we're on the east side, the bad side of the storm, uh, we're, we're still going to get a pretty good brunt, so it, the, every, every mile it can go west, we're thankful and uh, we're prayerful that it will keep doing that. But if, it, you know, if, it, if they're talking about it moving due north shortly, and if it does that, then we're going to get m more rain. Uh, the wind is, you know, obviously the wind's a concern because it always is when it's steady like this, but our, our rain fall is what our real concern is. And you've been looking at the radar and it looks like something that you might expect to see later. Well, right? uh, unfortunately, we lived through 2016 twice and uh, the rain, the, the, the conditions of the lake and the amount of rain are, are very, very close to the same. Uh, we're just hoping that the rain will spread out over a longer period maybe and give us more time to get it out of the parish. So right now you're worried about what's going to happen with the river because if that, I guess, um, overtakes its banks, that's going to go into homes. Is that right? Can you give me the picture of what would happen? Well, in, in 2016, twice we had about 5,000 homes flood. The second time was about 11,000. So yes, it's a real concern for us if the, if, the, if the amount of rain comes and the river's crest where they are. The crests are projected lower than the August 2016 flood, which is a plus, but not, not terribly, not that much lower, not enough for us to, to take a deep breath or to relax. We're, uh, we're, we're very vigilant, making sure we, and our citizens know that if, if they're in low-lying areas and they've, if they flooded in 83 or in 2016 in March, to, let's, let's go ahead and take the precaution and, and take care of your, your business and move on out so that you're safe during this time. And now the, the river crest, the storm is going to come through. The river crest isn't until Monday, Monday and Tuesday. So unfortunately, it's, you know, we're going to kind of it's going to clear. It's going to look like we're in good shape, and then that river's going to, the water's going to come back down through the river and cause those crests. You said uh, in 2016, then that wasn't even a named storm. Is that right? That's correct. 2016 was just two significant rain events. Is there anything else you want people to know right now, uh, places that they might be able to find help at this point? Well, we do have two shelters open uh, at Hammond Westside in Hammond and uh, Kentwood High School in Kentwood. So we do have shelters, but you know, um, our resources there, our, our emergency operations center is fully operational. So if you need anything, dial 911 uh, and, and, our, and our staff will go to work getting you the resources or the recovery or whatever it is that you need to try and make sure that you're comfortable and you're safe. So you're checking out this point here. What's next? Where are, other, where are the other areas? Well, I think from here we're probably going to go to A-Meet and, and check in on our emergency operations center and uh, just kind of keep a watchful eye and, and, and listen to the updates. We have a, a conference call at 8 o'clock with the uh, Southeast Hurricanes uh, Task Force. 
to give us the, the latest and greatest. We know that for the most part, the storm's kind of sitting and moving slow. Uh, we really would, we really, we need our prayer warriors to get this thing to move on through. All right, so you're just looking at the water a little bit right now, but really much of what you're expecting, the bad part of it is going to be later after landfall, after the storm passes. For the, yes, ma'am. After the, after the storm comes through, we're looking at Monday, Tuesday as our, our, our concern, and we're going to be watching it very, very closely. All right. Thank you so much. I really appreciate you. your time. All right, just giving you guys a live look at what's going on right now. Again, that's Lake Moripal over there. And uh, again, that's where they're going to be paying a lot of attention because after the storm passes, they're worried that uh, the winds will push that water over here uh, past the, the roadways. And then so the restaurant that's located right here, they are putting up their uh, barrier, their flood protection barrier. And, you know, we've been talking about this yesterday. Paul Murphy was out here uh, talking about it. But now you're seeing that crews are working to put it up right now. So uh, maybe I can briefly show you what this is. Uh, you know, they try to seal this up. They make this really tight here. And then, of course, uh, this is the protection here. Uh, they put there are little screws in the ground. Actually, if you are able to uh, show this other side here, that's what it looks like. And that's how they secure it to the ground here. So they will be working on that. Uh, in the meantime, we're going to be checking in on other areas around here again. Much of the story right now is just uh, some of the wind, and it's only about 25 miles per hour uh, from what we were measuring, what we are gathering. But they are waiting to see what's going to happen as this day progresses. For now, I'll send it back to you guys from Manchac. Jacqueline, thank you very much. And she's right there at Middendorf. We see Pfeiffer Horst, who is the owner in the background, as they try to secure that restaurant. He just opened a new restaurant in Slidell right. like two weeks ago.